and it's a real pleasure, uh, absolute pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, Ambassador uh, Vallegas, I would say half of humanity are women and half of torture survivors are women. Documentation in our organization shows that 51% of the 60,801 survivors treated by the International Rehabilitation Council for Torture Victims, 160 members in 75 states, uh, countries of the world, sorry, are women. So there was absolutely no doubt in our minds when this mandate came open that this had to be a woman. The reality of what's going on for women out there cannot be ignored. I don't think it is by, by men in this position, but the understanding of that lived experience and bringing that forcefully to the table and consistently to the table um, was something that we, and I can tell this from an NGO perspective, we decided as global organizations in the anti-torture campaigns, OMCT, IRCT, APT, um, FIACAT was with us, redressed. We had some meetings behind the scene as NGOs often will do and said, we're gonna move on this. Female candidates, where are they? Let's go. And this is the way I think civil society can really mobilize because the cause was so obvious. And the, what you talked about, and I think it was uh, millennia, you know, candidates, are there candidates enough? There are tons of candidates. There are well-qualified women out there. And this time of the 30 applicants, 21 were women, many of them incredibly highly qualified. So this uh, idea of, and it's what I would like to speak to, what these NGOs have been doing is coaching, mentoring, explaining, talking about what does it mean to have this mandate? What will it cost? What is the time you're gonna to have to spend? What kind of language will you have to be using? What kind of corridors will you be navigating in this position? It's a big role for us. We spend a lot of time on it. Luckily in the organizations that we work on, this whole debate and discussion, which is really kind of a, an educational pathway for young leaders to have their eyes open to this topic. It allows us then to bring young leaders within our organizations to the forefront. So there's like a whole forest of female leadership within organizations, among others, like the International Rehabilitation Council for Torture Victims, who are ready and willing to step into this mandate. Yes, they need training. Yes, they need to understand the intricacies of it, but they're there. And that's what happened this time. There were quite a few members that said, I'd be willing to do that. And we're talking to them about, you'll have to leave your family this many days of the year. You'll have to be traveling to areas where it's quite risky this much time. It will cost you in hours, in emotions, in your professional skills, in your checkbook at the end of the day to do this. Are you willing? Yes, we're willing. So it was a really fascinating process to be on with colleagues in the NGO environment to say, let's get the qualified candidates into the process so they could do the interviews, so they can submit all the application. Um, you know, there's a lot behind this, right? The whole process behind the administrative process of getting to that point where you actually submit your application. But, but that's what some of the NGOs have been helpful in doing, this coaching, mentoring, bringing forward young leadership into that process. I would say, given that there's so many female candidates out there and we saw them stepping up this time, I would be very, willing to talk with other mandates about how to do this, but you do need to have civil society among others who are willing to take on the role. And it's an informal role. I mean, this is part of what we do. This is not part of the IRCT strategy as such, but it's just implicit, right? People should have a voice where the decisions about them are being taken. And so this whole piece about transparency and accountability and having more females in our own leadership is also a role we've taken on. And as Victor, you were talking about, you know, we say we want a gender balanced board. We do have that. We want a gender balanced council. We have that. We want a gender balanced management team. We have that. We don't participate in, in uh, panels where there's not gender parity. So there's small things and large things that we can all be doing as civil society in making sure that as we work toward getting more gender parity also in the special reporters, and we're so pleased and proud to see the first female as special reporter for torture, hopefully on July 8th. Um, and also 
a person that we know very well in RCT. And there's also been, I wouldn't say grooming, but there's been a lot of work done. So she knows this work so well as many of the other members who applied for this position. Last thing I'd like to say here is it's also important as we talk about gender parity, now I'm repeating myself a bit, but the younger generation, right? Young women have to see who work in civil society or in ministries around the world that this is possible for them. And the way to do that is to talk more about these mandates and the possibility, but also to, to walk the talk, right? We all have a responsibility and Dr. Uju from Nigeria uh, was one of the actually applicants for the job, always talks about this and I will repeat her fine words. We should all use our spheres of influence. Each and every one of us, you know, at home, in our community, in our neighborhood, in our professional spheres, but also our private spheres, we have the ability to influence. And if we can fight the good fight, which this one is, I think we can make, and we showed it here. I mean, we were working the phones like crazy, right? We were using every single possibility of any kind of influence and sphere of influence we had with this mandate in action. That's what it takes. If it's a good fight, you fight it. So, I mean, okay, i am gotten very enthusiastic here, but it was really nice to be part of this process. Thank you very much for, for inviting us in. Um, and as I said, there are a lot of lessons to be learned. You can't map it out every time, right? It won't go the same every single time. You know, our donors are always asking us, where's your re results-based framework? And how did you get from A to B to C? And, you know, it's not a linear pathway, right? But if the window opens or the door, push it, bang it open and go in there and take the space. And I think that's what we've done this time. So Ambassador uh, Belejas, thank you very much for taking the bold decision and all of you on the call and all of us, we did this together, right? This is SDG 17 partnership in action. So um, thank you very much.